This is The Good Life with Ambassador Larry Huggins, and we are continuing with our Gospel of Paul, and I hope you've been enjoying it. I, I really love this material. I really love it. And uh, we're doing a, a subcategory. We've, we've cycled through, gosh, about 53 different episodes on the Gospel of Paul, and now I'm doing something called The Church That Paul Built, which is part of this whole series, but it's kind of a sub topic. And I don't know how much further I'm going to go with this. Uh, uh, maybe a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks more, we'll see, because I, I have so much material that I'd like to share with you. And it's very important. Paul built a church that was unlike anything that had ever been upon the earth. Uh, there was never, there had never been an institution or an organization, an entity, if you will, like the church that Paul built. Now, since then, we've continued to build, and, and he gave us a warning. He said, uh, make sure you, you're careful how you build on it. Not wood, hay, or stubble, but gold, silver, and precious jewels. And wood, hay, and stubble are things that are perishable. And I've heard preachers say for years, well, we have to be culturally relevant. We have to find out what people want and give it to them. I said, well, what they want is sex, drugs, and rock and roll. <laughs> Uh, and, and we're not going to do that. <clears throat> no, we're going to build upon the eternal word of God, which is uh, non-perishable. Praise God. We need, to, we need to build a church that will pass the test of time. It's not about uh, social relevancy as much as it is. Uh, I've got my chair on my microphone cord here. It's not so much about social relevancy as it is about a bibli biblical accuracy. And I think if we, if we get the word right, then uh, the social part of it will work out fine because we'll find ourselves living uh, a life that's pleasing unto God in compliance with him. And when a man's ways please the Lord, everybody else will be at peace with him, right? Okay, I, I'm going to talk about some different aspects here of the church that, that Paul built. Now, he built a church to accommodate the Holy Spirit. He built a church that's based upon the new covenant. So we'll start with that, the new covenant church that Paul built. Just some scriptures. 1 Corinthians 3.10, and this is, this is one of my favorite. I reference this a lot. Paul said, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, an architecton, I have laid the foundation. Now, he didn't say Peter, James, and John laid it. He said, he said, I laid it. And that really is the tr truth because he didn't receive his gospel from men, but by direct revelation from Jesus. I've laid the foundation and others build thereupon, but let every man take heed how he builds their own, for no other foundation can be laid than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. In, any, in other words, uh, the model before Jesus, there were the synagogues, there's where people went to the houses, house of worship, and that was pre-Jesus. And there are types and shadows, I'm not arguing that point, but Jesus himself taught that we have to have new wines for new wineskin, right? And we have to have a, 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 a new garment. And so we have a, a new church organization to accommodate a new covenant which is, remember, he, Paul taught that it's a better covenant based on better promises. And it, it's a covenant that celebrates the new creation. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Everything's become new. Uh, people did not know who they were in Christ until Paul came along and started teaching in Antioch. He taught for one year. It was a mixed congregation of Gentile converts to Jesus and Jewish converts to Jesus. But the Jewish converts saw themselves primarily as Jews, their identity hadn't changed, who believed in Jesus, who followed Jesus. 
And the Gentiles, uh, in fact, the Jewish believers told the Gentile believers, well, you got to become Jews first before you get saved. And Paul come, came along and he straightened that out and he, and he taught being Jew doesn't profit you, being a Gentile doesn't profit you, but being a new creature in Christ. And he taught the people at Antioch who they are in Christ, what they have in Christ, and what they can do through their divine union with Christ. And that's when the believers started calling themselves Christians. It was a direct result of Paul teaching his gospel. So he built a church uh, for new creatures, for a new species of being not for Gentiles who went to pagan temples, not for Jews who went to synagogues, but he built a new church for the new man. Praise God, good stuff. Uh, it was an organized church. Paul believed in organization. First Corinthians 12, 28, God has set in the church apostles, prophetly, uh, first of all, apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. After that, miracles, gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of tongues, and so forth. Now, this word, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, has to do with rank and authority. So Paul put the apostles at the top, right underneath and answerable to the apostles were the prophets, and then after that, teachers and so forth. Uh, we've been in, um, gosh, uh, for many, many years, many years. Uh, this may not be so for the ecumenical churches, but... Uh, in, in Protestant churches, for many years, we've been in a teaching mode and we've celebrated pastors and teachers and, and they're certainly worth celebrating. But there was no recognition of the prophet or even apostles. Apostles uh, have kind of, the idea of the apostles come back in vogue somewhat in the past, I don't know, 30 or 40 years. But, uh, you know, uh, there were, there were things that were invented that aren't even out of the Bible, cardinals. And uh, somebody said they're called cardinals because they wear those red robes like the bird. I don't know about that, but uh, cardinals, uh, bishops, archbishops, and uh, so forth. And so we, we have been celebrating um, bishops and pastors and teachers, but not necessarily prophets and evangelists and so forth. Anyway, uh, I believe in all the ministry gifts. How about you? Well, thank God for Paul because we wouldn't know anything about ministry gifts if he didn't teach on it. And he built his church in a fashion that was highly organized so that the Holy Spirit could move without being hindered. And Paul pastored vicariously. Um, this is important to me because uh, I pastor online. Z Church is an online church. But I'm in good company. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 5, 3, For I verily, as absent in the body, I'm with you present in the spirit. I'm absent in the body, but I'm present in the spirit. And he pastored supernaturally. He knew things by the spirit of God. He spoke prophetically and revelatory. And I believe in that. When Dr. Buddy Harrison and I co-founded Faith Christian Fellowship in Tulsa, Oklahoma, one of our tenets was that we would pastor supernaturally. And uh, I've done that since then. Uh, you say, what do you mean pastoring supernaturally? I mean, uh, uh, you have a connection in the Holy Spirit with everyone, and, and you know things by the Spirit about what they're going through and what they're doing, and you minister to them by the Spirit. A lot of churches nowadays depend upon a, a type of a therapy and personality test and keeping tabs on people. And, uh, and I'm not criticizing that. I'm just saying it's not a substitute for the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has empowered us to pastor supernaturally. He's given us words of knowledge, words of wisdom, and other revelatory and utterance gifts to make pastoring better. I'll give you an example. Um, on Saturday during Z Church, there's a lovely lo young couple in our church. And uh, during the afterglow, actually, we'd already been through our, our regular service, which, by the way, starts at 10 o'clock a.m. California time every Saturday. And right after the church service is over, we enter into another phase called the afterglow, which is fellowship and community. And, and, and our ministry continues oftentimes, a Holy Spirit ministry. And I asked this couple, I said, uh, 
you both uh, uh, speak in tongues and pray in tongues. Do you ever enter into an area where you uh, pray with the spirit and pray with the understanding, the ministry of divers tongues and the interpretation of divers tongues? I said, because I've been praying about you and I believe the Lord is going to start using you in the ministry of divers tongues, the interpretation of divers tongues. And they both lit up. And uh, the lady said, I, I was telling my husband just a few days ago that the Lord had shown me that he wants to use us more in this area. I said, there you have it. That's confirmation. So that's pastoring supernaturally. The Lord spoke to them uh, a week or two. Then he spoke to me. It was all by the Spirit. There had been no discussion about it. There had been no uh, interviews about it. I received it in my spirit, and I gave it to them by the Spirit, and it was a confirmation, a spiritual confirmation of what they had received by the Spirit. Isn't that a better way to pastor? Praise God. Makes life easy. Well, I better move right along because I only have about three minutes left, and I, I don't want to keep you longer than uh, I should. Um, Paul used circular letters. I mean, we use everything today. We use uh, videos. We use podcasts. We use blogs. We use everything we can use. Uh, but Paul had a situation where he had circular letters that were read to the churches. Colossians 4.16. And when this epistle is read among you, cause that it be read also in the church of the Laodiceans and that you likewise read the epistle from Laodicea. So they were exchanging these epistles. Paul would write them, sometimes dictate them, give, give them to couriers. Couriers would run them to the next church. Other couriers would run them, uh, you know, to other churches. And this is how he was able to pastor churches that were spread throughout the Roman Empire in many different countries. There, there were thousands, actually tens of thousands of miles. Uh, well, thousands of miles anyway. I don't know if it's tens of thousands, but thousands of miles between these churches. Uh, that number, Paul uh, traveled tens of thousands of miles. I don't know how far the furthest church was. Uh, we don't even know where the farthest church was because uh, I know for a fact he went for, to Spain. I'll read that in a moment. And some Bible historians believe that he went to France and he went to England. And I don't doubt it for a minute. Uh, there's some evidence that he did. Uh, the church was, a, was a, a disciplined church. Paul taught 1 Corinthians 14, 33, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. Peace means to put things in order, as in all the churches with all the saints. So Paul insisted on a divine order, and he taught uh, a divine order. The church, the church that Paul built was a missions-minded church. And uh, here's one of my favorite scriptures. Uh, of course it is. I live in Spain. Romans 15, 24. Whensoever I take my journey to Spain, see that? I will come to you, for I trust to see you in my journey and to be brought on my way thitherward by you. Thitherward. <laughs> That's King James for you're going to help me get to Spain. You're going to help pay my expenses for this missionary crusade that I'm going to do in Spain, in, in Tarasco, Spain. Yeah, praise God. So he taught people to give to missions, and he took up a lot of missionary offerings. Uh, it was a word of faith church. Now I'm a word of faith preacher. What does that mean? That means that we believe the Bible and we believe in salvation by grace through faith, not of works. So uh, Romans 10, 8, what says it? The word is nigh thee, even in your mouth and in your heart, the word of faith, which we preach. So that phrase, the word of faith, wasn't coined by Kenneth Hagin or Ken Copeland or one of your favorite preachers. It was coined by Paul, the word of faith. That's where we got it. He had the original word of faith church, which a word of faith is not just about naming it and claiming it. It's about righteousness by faith. Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. We call that the word of faith. Uh, Paul built a spirit-filled church. Ephesians 2.22, in whom you are also builded together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. The, Paul's purpose for building an organized New Testament church was so that the Holy Spirit could inhabit that church, could manifest in that church, so that that church would accommodate the Holy Spirit. And of course, that's what we want. My timer just went off, and I'll have to finish this in the next episode. 
the church that Paul built. That's what we're contending for. We want to do things as much as possible the way Paul built because he was the original master builder, the architect of the church and many things have changed in the last 2000 years but if we can go back close to the source we'll find out more what god's original idea was for the church and if we will begin to organize ourselves to accommodate the spirit of god and and set into place in our churches today contemporary churches some of the some of the principles that Paul built his church bonnet, and in fact, do our very best to set those principles in order, then we can have what they have. A church of explosive growth, a church that changed nations, a church that changed lives, a church that was filled with power and glory and prosperity and success. That's the church you're longing for. Praise God. Pastors, if you're listening to me, uh, I can help you. Uh, I can help you discover and put into place some of these principles. I've been helping churches for 48 years, and uh, I have been building churches and planting churches and every single one of them, a, a, word of, a word of faith, Holy Ghost Church that got results. Okay, enough for that. Remember again, Z Church uh, every um, Saturday morning, 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific time. You're very welcome. You can also be with us live on Facebook, uh, Twitch, and YouTube at the same time. But uh, come to the um, come to the Z Church platform and uh, check it out. We want to we want to know who we're talking to. We want to see you and hear you and get acquainted with you. And if you're looking for a place to serve, we've got a place for you. Uh, email us at info at zchurch.life and say, hey, I, I want to do something for God, and we'll get right back with you. And, and have a face-to-face -face time where we get acquainted and, and I can find out what's in your heart and we'll find a place for you to start doing something important and redemptive for Jesus. I have one last thing to say to you and I think you know what that is. And that is uh, keep it simple, Sometimes sweetheart. The most beautiful things can be so simple.